This is code.org. Let's see. Overflow and rounding. So if you miss class or need a refresher or warm up prompt, imagine you work at a local store in the register. All you have are nine and ten bills are nine ten dollar bills, nine one dollar bills and nine dimes. What's the largest amount of change you can that you can give to someone? So they're getting out place values. What's the smallest amount? Well, let's think here. Let's see if I can think. Okay, the largest amount. So if I have nine tens, nine ones, not okay, well, that's a nine, right? Yikes, no, it wasn't. Nine. Now what value is this? Well, it's times ten. So how much money is that? Times ten. That's ninety. Okay? Now what if I have nine ones, what's the largest value? Nine. Now there's no zero behind it because it's just nine. Now I have nine ten cent pieces. What's 10 cents actually equal in dollar terms? 0 0.10. All right, and I have nine of these, so I would have 0 0.9, right? Or we could add this zero if you're more comfortable with that. So what's the largest we could do? Well, we can take those larges, 99.9, or 99 and 90 cents. And the smallest, well, if I get to pick the smallest amount, I would pick just one of these guys and it'd be a point one. All right. What would you do if someone needs seven cents change? Ooh. If someone needs seven cents, that's a problem. We don't have that. So try to figure out what you might do. You could give a less amount. Could you round? It'd kind of be up to you. So this was a thought activity. And make sure you do spend some time contemplating because it will help you a lot. Overflow round. You and your partner should have, yep, binary on the website. We did this and we have a journal. So do this, navigate to level one, play with the odometer to figure out how it works. So let me mad YouTube magic this up. Here it is. Navigate, yep, play with the odometer to figure out how it works. Use the widget below to control the odometer with various number bases. Binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. Oof, they're getting into hex are the most common number systems to see in computer science. Hexes, by the way, guys, are colors. So if you ever mess with websites at all and you see like FF0000, that's red. If what I just said is gibberish, don't worry about it. All right, practice with them here. Set a value, predict what number round up or one round down will be. Okay, so let's just mess with this. Oh, fast. <laughs> Zoom. Let's pause, boom. All right, so what this is showing us is here's a binary number. Ah, eh, let's go way down. Can I just, boop, I'm gonna type an 11 here. All right, so 11 in binary, or let's do two, because that one's more obvious to us. We get zero, we get one, right? Because zero in binary is zero. One in binary is one. We just hit our maximum, because we only have a one to represent our max number. So now, since we hit our max, just like if we had just hit nine, we have to count up one. So now one will go here and zero there. So for two, it looks like a 10, right? So on and so forth. So 11, whoop, yep, that's binary oct, which I have not seen in computer science, honestly, not as of yet, and I have a degree in it. Uh, decimal is 11, I'm sure this is used somewhere. Decimal is 11, right? That's traditional for 11. Hex is B, because B in hexadecimal, hexadecimal goes zero to 15, and at nine, it's A, at I mean, at 10, it's A, at 11, it's B. So there's different ways to represent these numbers. Set the odometer to the highest number possible and then let it run. Okay, highest number possible, start. Whoop, what just happened? What happens at the odometer reading? Does it still show the distance driven by the car? No, what's it say here? Overflow, all right. What value would cause your flippy do to overflow? Ooh, what adaptation could you make that represent to represent that value using your newly adapted flippy do? Well, how could we represent right using your new? How could we represent it? How are we already? Well, so if we need another digit instead of an overflow, same deal. Up here we could do boom whatever would come next, 256, I'm not gonna be able to draw that, and a zero, all right? So we could staple tape, somehow get that onto the side here. All right, using that, how many total numbers can you represent? Ooh, well, keep in mind, binary, it's a base two language. So when I add a digit, 
how many more numbers can I represent? To put that into perspective, our normal system, which is a decimal system, what are you doing over here? Which is a decimal system, when we hit nine, right? When we hit the number nine, nine, what do we do? Well, if we want to count up one more, we want to add one, we're out of numbers. So we got to go to 10 and zero this column out. Well, now that we're at two digits, how many numbers can we make? Well, I can go all the way to 99, all the way to 99. So at first I can only go zero to nine, but then I hit nine and I have to go up a digit. Now I can go 10 to 99. So when we do that, we actually can make 10 times as many numbers, right? We can go counting zero, we can go to 99 numbers, but with zero, that's a hundred different numbers. So zero to nine is 10 different numbers. If we go up one digit, we can make a hundred. That's times a factor of 10. If we go up one more digit, we're at nine, 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 and hit a thousand. Well, wait a minute. Now, how many more numbers can we make? Well, a thousand too. What is that compared to a hundred? That's a factor of 10. Binary though is only a base two. So by each added digit, it's a factor of Yep. All right. You and your partner are opening a candy shop. Congratulations. Here are the prices of candies you will be selling. You need to put binary numbers into your shop's computer to represent the price for each candy your computer system. Come up with a representation for each of these values using your flippy do. Let me magic over to my flippy do. Keep in mind, we don't have decimals to represent with our flippy do. So what can we, well, what can we do? we need to be probably rounding. So for that first value, I guess I could put that there. For this first value, 176, well, I can represent what? A two here, right? Because if my flippy do has a one here and a zero here, then we start adding two plus, well, that's a zero, we don't add that, is two. But what about that difference now? So if it's a 10, that would be two. But that means, is 2 exactly 176? Hmm, who's going to pay that difference? Same with chocolate. We can do a 4, but we don't have a decimal here. So we could do 1, then 0, 0. Now who's going to pay that difference? Hmm, these are things you're really going to want to keep in mind. How did you go about deciding the number, the binary for each price? Who pays the difference between true and the value? The shop owner or the customer? And how did you figure that out? All right. So now to visualize this more, think if you had a shop that had two scales with binary numbers. One rounds numbers up, one down. Now for binary, it's two digits. So you really want to start wondering about how much of a problem that could be for your store. And it could lead to some, well, pretty big complications. So. Hopefully you get to discuss that with your class or you're previewing this to discuss with us tomorrow. Cool. Onward.